Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be on a bunch of products that YouTube made me buy. So a few days ago on my Instagram page, I did a little poll on my stories to see what you guys would like to see out of um, one video and this video. So they got very, very close votes. I think there was like two votes between them. So it was pretty much 50-50. So I thought I would just go ahead and do both the videos this week because it seems like you guys wanted to see both the videos equally. And to be honest, I was going to film a Halloween video this week, but I realized by the time I edited it and everything that it wouldn't get up in time for Halloween so it'd be kind of a moot point so I'm sorry I missed that and I didn't do a Halloween video but I've just been a bit all over the place this month and I haven't really had time to plan and I didn't want to put a half-assed effort into something like that. Let's just get into the video if you want to see what products you should maybe buy then please keep on watching. So I've got a bunch of products here right in front of me and I've just realized how much money I spent on products that you should maybe buy. It is actually ridiculous. Um, so m I'd say most of these products did work for me. There is a few products that didn't work for me and I'll explain why. Um, so I'll just go ahead and get started. RCNA No Color Powder. So a bunch of YouTubers talked about this. They said that it was their absolute holy grail setting powder. Perfect for dry skin, I think. The reason that I bought it is because I saw Kathleen Lyons talk about it and she has, and she talks about always having such dry skin. So I was like, yes what I need and honestly 100% on the money this is perfect for people with dry skin if you do struggle with dry skin and finding a setting powder that doesn't enhance your texture or doesn't enhance your dry patches then I 100% recommend picking this up it is an absolute holy grail for me and I've spoken about it in heaps of videos but I just thought I'd touch on it because it is definitely a hit for me um, so on the talk of powders the next one I'll talk about is the Glossier Wilder so last week I used this video in my um, new products try on and this was in there and I mentioned that the reason I did buy it is just because everyone talks about it and honestly it is a really great setting powder. If you do have dry skin again and you are looking for a setting powder, that, like a coloured setting powder or just a coloured finishing powder that's not going to enhance your dry skin, I 100% recommend picking this up if you can. I'm sorry if you're in Australia or if you're in a country that's not the UK or America. Um, get a hook up, find this and pick it up. It is great. It gives it like a really airbrushed finish somehow. Um, but I can see myself repurchasing a million of these when I'm back in the States next year. So the Ordinary Foundation is my next product. Um, so it's the Coverage Foundation. I didn't include the Serum Foundation because I didn't really see many people talking about this. I didn't even actually know it existed before I went onto the website to purchase this one. So a lot of people when these first came out and they were sold out for ages, so many people when they were picking these up they were talking about them. This video um, that I did on these has um, some of the highest views on, out of all of my videos, I guess just because there is a lot of hype. Um, honestly, the Coverage Foundation is not my favourite. I do prefer the Serum Foundation as I mentioned. I just find um, that for something that's called a coverage foundation, it doesn't really have any more coverage than the serum foundation and the serum foundation just works so much better with my skin type. Um, I don't really go for this foundation very much to be honest just because I just prefer the serum one. But if you are on the more oily side then this would probably be really good for you. Okay so my next product is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. So when these first came out, they were so, so hyped up um, that I really need to go out and get it. And honestly, the hype is real with these. I've spoken about it um, in one of my older videos, talking about how it's my absolute holy grail foundation. And that still stands as um, there's been a lot of foundations I've tried since picking this one up, but it's still on my top five, totally. Um, this is still my first stick. And I don't use it that often just because it is on the more expensive side and I do want to save it for times that I know I'm going to be needing to wear foundation all day and wanting to make it look perfect all day. So yeah, the, the height is totally real with the Hourglass Stick Foundation. I think it'll work perfectly with any kind of skin type. Uh, so if you are looking for a full coverage foundation uh, in stick form, I totally suggest picking this up. It's better than any other one I've tried. On the topic of stick foundations, uh, let's talk about the Anastasia Stick Foundation. So I bought this before I even started YouTube. I bought it, I'd say about a year ago. I think I got it at the same time that I got another one of their products that I'm going to talk about in a moment. Um, so it was, I think, one of the first Anastasia products I tried, um, not other than the Dip Brow. Um, I don't like it. It's not the best. Um, I don't know why I'm putting this in YouTube when we buy it, but I, when I these came out, there was a lot of talk about them, 
and they were very positive and negative. Um, but I just wanted to give it a go. Oh my god, it is so white. Why did I buy this? It is like actually white. I, I'm sure if maybe you mix it with an oil or something, it could work, but it is so drying and so cakey. And every time I've tried to use it, it just. Um, so, speaking of Anastasia, I've got a couple of her products here. And so it's a totally hyped up brand. I think one of the one of the most hyped up brands on YouTube, one of the most spoken about brands on social media. Um, and this is no exception. Um, so I bought the Modern Renaissance, I think it was a few months after it came out, and this is when I first started getting into makeup. Um, so it was definitely one of my first eyeshadows, and I still reach for it um, at least once a week. And you can barely tell it's been touched. It, is in still such in good condition. It leads me to say that it's absolutely worth the hype. I haven't seen anyone say anything bad about this, like literally ever. It is, it's just incredible and it totally started the trend of the whole warm, peachy, pinky eyeshadows. Um, so they were really onto something when they did this. And I really hope they can bring out another eyeshadow as good as this because honestly the subculture palette I have and the colours are amazing but the formula is just not. And the new Prism palette didn't really do much for me either. I thought it was okay and people said the formula was really good on it, but honestly I couldn't see myself reaching for it very much. So I'm trying to cut back on buying so much makeup because I am saving it at the moment to go overseas. I don't know, I'm going to just buy a bunch of makeup when I'm there anyway. So, uh, so another Anastasia product is the Nicole Guerrero Glow Kit. Uh, so this is incredible. I've spoken about it heaps before, but I thought I'd quickly touch on it because it is a really, really good um, glow kit. It's the, actually, it's the only glow kit I have. I really want to, really wanting to pick up the sugar one. I think I'm going to. I hope it's um, not limited edition. I hope it is um, a permanent product, but I haven't really seen that. I know Prism is limited edition, but I'm not sure. Um, if the sugar one is but anyway this is a really good palette the um, highlights in it are a little bit chunky and they do go on a little bit glittery um, but I find if you take like a denser highlighting brush than just like a fan brush it really does sink into the skin and it lasts all day okay, so next product um, while we're on the talk of highlights I've got two so the Ofra one um, I only purchased recently but the formula on this is phenomenal it is so buttery you do not need to wet the brush it goes on um, like what? look at that are you kidding that was just like a little spin of the finger and like are you kidding me like it is like one of the most buttery highlights I've ever ever used um, Unfortunately, Rodeo Drive is a little bit too dark for me. Um, maybe in summer and when I'm overseas next year, I will be able to get some more use out of it because I'll be a little less, um, I'll be a little less pale. But um, for right now, I'm really impressed with the formula of Ofra's highlight. I really wanted to try the glazed donut one that um, Nikki Tutorials did, but it's, they're just so expensive. So I think I might save that for another time. Um, another one that was a bit more hyped up is Becca highlights. They're huge. They're well loved in the beauty community um, and if I'm being honest I'm not 100% sure why um, so this is just like a mini one that I got as a sample in a Sephora order that I made a couple of months ago but honestly I just I don't see the hype like I find it to be a bit of a dry I don't know that was like the same swirl that I did with the Opal one and like you can see on my finger you can see it but when I swatch it like, I just find it a little bit dry and I found even layering it on top of my face a few times with a few different brushes, I just didn't get that much of a crazy glow and I feel like I'm totally in the minority when I say this because pretty much everyone I watch is obsessed with Becca highlights and I just, I don't know, um, this one is opal by the way, I don't know if it's just this colour, um, but I, by swatching it and looking at it, it looks like it would be a really good colour for me but it just, it just doesn't show up very much so... So moving on, I've got the Butter Bronzer. I think this goes without saying that I'm absolutely obsessed with it. I use it in almost every single one of my videos where I'm doing a tutorial, just because it never ever fails me. It is the perfect bronzer for my skin. It's not too warm, so it doesn't come off orange. It's so buttery, as the name suggests, so it blends really amazingly into my skin. And honestly, I haven't been able to find a bronzer that I like more. 
like even high-end bronzers just don't do this justice and whilst so many people talk about this on social media and YouTube it is totally worth it if you can manage to pick it up especially in Australia I suggest I suggest it because you will, you cannot go wrong with this so these were really popular when they first came out and everyone was trying them I haven't really seen much about them um, for a little while now but I thought I'd mention them so it's the Steel Up Magnificent Metals Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadows. So these are really incredible. I don't use them very often just because they are a little bit of a commitment. They're a little bit um, chunky, um, but they are amazing, give incredible color payoff. Um, and I totally suggest them. They're really, really good and totally worth the hype. Uh, moving on, let's talk about Morphe brushes. So when I was in America, I did manage to go to the Morphe store and I picked up a bunch of brushes and honestly, for the price, they're pretty affordable. I really like them. I think they're good. I have found that there has been shedding in some of them, um, which a lot of people have complained about. But honestly, for how much you're paying, I'm not really going to complain about it. If I was to buy, for example, a MAC brush, not that I would because I'm cruelty free, or like a more expensive brush then I would complain if I found that there was a lot of shedding in those brushes because they are really really pricey but for these I don't think um, they're any more I paid any more than like 10 US 10 or 15 US dollars for each brush so for how much you're paying they work really well for me okay so I've only got a few products left so this product I just want to give a disclaimer I know it's not cruelty free but I didn't buy it I got it in like a sample box or something it is the benefit professional I just thought I mentioned it because there was a there was a lot of hype with this um, and yeah I didn't actually put my money towards it but I think it's shit honestly I think it is trash I don't really have that many big pores luckily but I do find I get them on my nose around my nose and like on my forehead up here so I've tried a couple of times with a couple of different other primers couple couple of different other foundations and I found it just really dries me out I find it lifts up my foundation I find it kind of breaks up my foundation and it just doesn't last very well throughout the day um, and overall I probably wouldn't suggest this if you have dry skin maybe it's better for oily skin but honestly not worth the hype for me okay so we've got the coveted Tarte Shape Tape Concealer I think this goes without saying if you've watched any of my other videos that I adore this it is totally worth the hype it works amazing I feel like with any kind of skin from other videos I've watched people with oily skin and people with dry skin it just works so so good um, and I'm going to continue using this for the rest of my life so next up I've got the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara um, so when this first came out this was totally hyped up um, and I do really like it it's one of the only things from Too Faced I will go out of my way to say I actually like I'm not a huge fan of Too Faced personally just because I find their products are a little bit inconsistent and overpriced and a little bit gimmicky but this works really well the only negative I will say about this is the only negative I will say about this is that it does dry out really quickly. Um, so I mean in the tube, the actual product dries out very quickly and also on your eyes. So it sometimes does flake throughout the day. Um, I don't get that too much. Um, not like other people have said or I've seen other people talk about. But it does happen from time to time. But it does dry out. I found it does dry out in the product very, very quickly. So um, I really have to use this up within, I'd say, three months at the very most. Otherwise, it's just completely dry and flaky mess. But when it is new, it works like a dream. So the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. So as you know, in the video that I posted using this palette, I said um, that I would try to avoid getting it because shipping with Morphe is really ridiculous. But... It has become my new favorite palette. I use it every single day and every single look. There is always a shadow that I have to go for in this. It's just, and the, sh the shadow quality is just so beyond. It is like, I'm gonna go as far to say I find it's as good as like Anastasia. I find it it's way, way better than their Morphe's other shadows. And I really hope with Morphe's new products that they're starting to bring out now, they're introducing the same shadow formula because if that's the case, I'm so impressed. It is amazing. Jaclyn Hill and Morphe did such a good job on this and it is totally worth the hype. If you can afford to pick it up, totally do it. I saw recently that they have decided to make this permanent, which is really, really awesome um, because it is just a fabulous palette. 
Um, so now I've got a lipstick that I saw um, one of my favorite YouTubers talk about. I think her YouTube is Wife Life. She's um, like a vegan, cruelty free, I guess, a beauty guru. But she talks about other things as well. But she talked about the Charlotte Tilbury Kim KW lipstick. I spoke about this in one of my previous videos recently. Um, Honestly, I do like it, but for how much Charlotte Tilbury products are and how expensive this was, I honestly have do have better lipsticks. Um, I do like to use it though because I find it's a good lipstick to put on before work because because it's not it's not completely pigmented. I find it's just a really natural lipstick, and if I just want to chuck something on and not have to worry about it, this is my go-to. So yeah, I'm kind of in the on the fence with this one because if it was if it was cheaper, I would totally be like this is awesome, this is a really good lipstick. But for the price, I think there are better products out there. And last but certainly not least, it is Kylie Cosmetics. So I only have Kylie Cosmetics lipsticks. I don't have any of the eyeshadows. I don't have any of the blushes or the highlights or anything like that. I've only ever tried the lip products. Um, but personally, I really like them. Um, I think her liquid lipstick formula is probably my favorite. Today I'm wearing Malibu on the lips. Um, and it's just a really flattering, um, I, like a gray, grayish, grayish, yeah. A really flattering grayish color um, and I've got a bunch of her other liquid lipsticks. I've got the, the Kim KW um, collab which is also really really nice um, and yeah I I can't judge her upon any of her other products but her lip products I think it's totally worth the hype. That is all of my YouTube made me buy it products. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!